Okay, so I'm going to do three exam questions. These exam questions that I'm doing, they are all taken from Edexcel. Okay, so they are all Edexcel questions. And this first one was from the 2019 summer series, and it was from paper 1H. If it's paper 1, you know that means that it is non-calculator. So I'm going to do this question, first of all, like the slower way, and then I'm going to try the quicker way afterwards. Um, I imagine most of you would probably think of it the slower way to begin with. So it says here that H is inversely proportional to P, and then P is directly proportional to the square root of T. It then tells us all this information here, and it wants us just to find out what H is in terms of T. So the slow way would be to say, okay, well, H is inversely proportional to P, so H equals K over P. And I'm going to use the information that they've given us. So H is 10, and they've said when P is 6, so that's K over 6 meaning that k is 60, so h is equal to 60 over p. That's that first part dealt with. It then says that p is directly proportional to the square root of t. Now, I'm actually not going to use the letter k because I've already used the letter k earlier on, but if you did, it's not going to be a problem. Instead of using the letter k, I'm going to use the letter c just because it's another letter that we often use for a constant, okay? So I'm going to do the same process. I'm now going to just say that when p is equal to 6, t is equal to 144. So that's c and the square root of 144. The square root of 144 is 12. So in this case, we've now got 6 divided by 12, which is a half. So c is equal to a half, meaning that the formula for this one, this one over here, is that p is equal to a half times the square root of t. Now, they want us to get a formula for h in terms of t, which means I need to somehow combine together this formula with this formula that we have. Now, I can do that because I have got what p is equal to. So I can take this formula that I have of this one here. I'm going to move it up here. h equals 60 over p. Well, 60 over p is a half root t. So that means I've basically got my answer here. I've got that h is equal to 60 over a half root t. But I don't like the 60 divided by a half. So you might want to think to yourself, what is 60 divided by a half? Well, that's the same as 60 multiplied by 2 over 1, which is just 120. So this is h equals 120 over the square root of t. And that's our answer. But I said that we can do this in a much quicker way. So I'm going to erase all of this, and I'm going to see if we can come up with this same answer in a much quicker way. So I'm going to leave the final answer just so that I can show you that we end up with the same thing. This time we've got that h is inversely proportional to p, and that p is directly proportional to t. So I could go straight in and actually say that h is actually going to be inversely proportional to root t, because if p is proportional to t, then I could replace this p with root t, because they're directly proportional to each other. So I was able to kind of take that p and replace it with root t, meaning that h is just equal to k over root t, and I can completely ignore the fact that p is equal to 6. So that means that when h is equal to 10, I'm going to find out what k is. t is 144. So that's going to be 10 equals k over 12, and 10 times 12 is 120. So k is 120, meaning if I go back to this formula that I have here, I can say that h is equal to 120 over the square root of t, which is exactly the same thing that we said in the previous working. I think this one is a bit harder, but I just wanted to kind of show you both methods to show you that you can combine these two statements into this one single statement because of the fact that p is directly proportional to t. That means I can just replace it with a t there, a root t there, sorry. Okay, the second one I've got is from a calculator paper and it's from November 2018 at Excel. It says y is inversely proportional to x cubed. So immediately I'm going to say that y is equal to k over x cubed. When y is 44, x is a. So when y is 44, x is equal to a, in other words, just a cubed. As usual, we're going to find out what k is equal to. So I'm going to do 44a cubed equals k. Okay, so we've got the formula now. We've got what k is equal to. So I'm going to rewrite this. This is that y equals 
44a cubed divided by x cubed. And they've said that when, sorry, that y equals 5.5 when x equals 2a. So I'm not going to use this. I'm going to try and show that this is the right answer when x is equal to 2a. So when x is equal to 2a, y is going to be equal to 44a cubed divided by 2a all cubed. Now it might be worth working this out that 2a all cubed, that is 2 cubed times by a cubed, which is 8a cubed. Make sure that you cube the 2 and the a separately. So this is 44a cubed divided by 8 a cubed. The a cubeds will cancel, so I have 44 divided by 8, we're hoping that that's going to give us 55, and 40, sorry, not 55, 5.5, and 44 divided by 8 is 5.5. So we've shown that when x equals 2a, y equals 5.5. And this is question 14, usually there's about 20 or 22 questions, so it's about two-thirds of the way through the exam paper. Last one I'm going to show you is from the 2020 series, and this is paper 1H, which also means that it is non-calculator. And they've blended this question with some percentages. So it says that x is proportional to the square root of y. So x is equal to k, the square root of y. And it does say that y is greater than 0. We might need that, we might not. It says that y is increased by 44%. Now, if you remember, what do you multiply something by if you increase it by 44%? Well, the multiplier is to multiply it by 1.44. So if y is increased by 44%, this question is weird. We're not even going to find out what k is. To increase y by, one point, by 44%, we would say that it is y multiplied by 1.44 which is 1.44y. So I'm going to actually use this formula, and I'm now going to say, okay, well, x is equal to k multiplied by, I'm changing it and saying that it's 1.44y. Now I'm going to have to use my knowledge of thirds and think, okay, well, I could split this second part up into the square root of 1.44 and the square root of y. And you need to say, okay, well, can I work out what the square root of 1.44 is? Well, we know that the square root of 144 is 12, so the square root of 1.44 is 1 1.2. So this means that x is equal to k times by 1.2 the square root of y. And if I write that in a slightly different order, this is 1.2 k root y. So this is what it was originally. It was x equals k root y. And now we've said that x is equal to 1.2 k root y. I don't know why I've got that all jumping up here. So this is saying that x is what it was originally, k root y, but it's been multiplied by 1.2. So as x has been multiplied by 1.2, hopefully you can recognize what this means. It has been increased by 20%. So the answer to this question, what is the percentage increase? It is 20%. And actually, this question doesn't have a ton to do with the proportional stuff, does it? It's using your, your knowledge of thirds, the square roots of numbers, and also this relationship between this is what it originally was, and this is what it becomes. So it was originally k root y. It's been multiplied by 1.2. We know that 1.2 means increase by 20%, because obviously 1.2 represents 120%. So that's everything for direct and indirect proportion. Um, hopefully, direct or, sorry, indirect is also the same thing as inverse proportion as well. Um, so you've got those three exam questions. And good luck with all of your studies. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel? This is the end of the playlist, but head to my channel's homepage to see what else I might be able to help you with. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.